books are so good, you have to read them, and they have immaculate spring vibes. Because even I, who wasn't much into romance, could appreciate this. Look at how adorable this is. I'm so in love with it. Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the place where I chat about books and sometimes writing. And today I'm talking about books, specifically spring books, because spring is coming up. Um, in the Netherlands, it's like when I'm filming this, two days still spring, so I'm like really excited because I love the cozy dark days, but I'm really excited for being able to read in the garden again. That was really, that's just a vibe and I really want that vibe back. So to get in that headspace, to get into that vibe, I'm gonna to, going to recommend to you a couple of books that have spring vibes to me. And um, forgive me if I can't explain very well what exactly is the spring vibe. It's just that I don't know. Um, maybe it's just a vibe. Vibes are hard to explain. But I'll try to give you an explanation of why I think it's a fitting book. Also, I have loads of genres in here. So I think there will be, always be like something you like in there. And I think let's just get on with it, shall we? I really don't know if I should start with the fantasy or the other genres. I think I want to start with the fantasy. If you want like high adult fantasy that has a lot of spring themes, I would recommend to you The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. I have been talking about this book a little too much, I feel like, but it's just a very good book. <laughs> it really is. This book is about three women who are in this magical country where every hundred years or so there is a fifth season, which is just total climactic not climactic, like with the climate just goes wild, there's like apocalypse, so there are like earthquakes and volcano eruptions, mostly just a lot of earthquakes really, and we just follow these three women trying to survive during a fifth season. And now is the point where I'm going to try and attempt to explain to you why this is a spring book in my opinion. Evidence number one. This would be a great book to read in the garden, I think. Can I explain that further? No, but I just think it's a good book for sitting in a chair in the garden or on your balcony and reading that book. Evidence number two. This book is a lot about nature and climate and also a lot of earthquakes, which is not like associated with spring, but it also has like a lot of... Uh, earth similes so it would talk about like eruption in metaphors and shit and um its prose is very strong earth themed and i feel like it just fits spring the most wow that was the best explanation of why I f it fits the vibe how can i explain this to you it just has spring vibes that's all I can say, and it has amazing character, and, and a lot of ideas that it tackles are just really good, so I just I just recommend it to you, alright? <laughs> That's all I can say. The only reason this has spring vibes to me, and there is another book on this list that is here for the exact reason, and that is because it is... I don't want to be rude, but I don't know if it's like... Because it's like an Asian country based upon, but I don't know. I don't know anything about Asian countries. So it could be like based on China or Japan. I think it's based on China. But anyway, books that are like based on Chinese culture or Japanese culture have spring vibes. And you that cannot convince me. Con that came out so Dutch. <laughs> and you cannot convince me otherwise. Um, this book is about Lan, who lives in this world where her, um, I don't know how her world is called. She lives in this China-based em empire and then is taken over by Elantians, I believe. And they are like 
a Western country, a representative of a Western country in this book, and they are taking over the country. And one of these men kills her mother, and her mother left, uh, I think, a mark on her hand, her arm. And that's all her mother leaves her, and she's trying to find out what that mark means. And one night, because she lives at this tea house where it's, she's kind of like a geisha, and she serves men there, there, but she is trying to escape. And one night she meets this boy, whose name is Zen, I believe. And they escape there together and try to... Because she finds a really dark magic in her, she, so he's very intrigued by that. And I think he, they go to like this magic Japanese or Chinese, I'm sorry, like some school. I just imagine like very serene music playing in the background and like those lotus flowers being all around. It has very much spring theme. I could, it's very vivid. I could really imagine being there, but it has bamboo a lot and like rattling in the wind and the sound of rain. And I think this book is very good for the early spring days when there's still a bit of rain, but also at least in the Netherlands. But then I just feel like it fits the spring vibe. And this book is so good. It's, I really love this. Oh, let me, let me tell you the title. It's a Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Emily Van Zow. Why didn't I even tell that? Also, the cover is just so stunning. Look at that beauty. And we have the last one, which is like official fancy, but I don't even think it's official fancy. It's more on literary fiction side. But this is a retelling of Cersei, and it's called Cersei by Madeline Miller. This is about the daughter of Helios, uh, Cersei, who is a nymph, but she is not powerful or beautiful. And all the nymphs are beautiful, so she's just kind of an outcast. She doesn't belong there. And one day she does, she discovers she can wield the power of witchcraft. Well, she does something terrible with it. And then she gets banished to this island, the island of Ayaya. Ayaya? I don't know how to pronounce that. And basically there she discovers more about her powers as a witch and um, all the time when men come to that island on like a ship, it's like a pirate crew or something, she turns them into pigs. Which is like the ideal life, just being a witch on an island and turning men into pigs, like, it's so great. And she just has this, this fence where all the pigs are and they just go around their day there, it's so funny. And she just goes around the island and collects herbs for her spells and berries and she goes to these gods when they ask her help and they are like very mythical and flowery it is so hard to explain how the vibes are but I feel like it just has strong themes of like witchcraft but in a spring way you have like witchcraft but autumn and then you have spring witchcraft and this is spring witchcraft especially like the greek mythology i feel like that is also a bit spring springy i don't i don't know like you can see the pictures are also very like the beetles and the flowers also discover <laughs> the spring books have the best covers honestly a magical realism book and this is one that I really like it's like such a and behold the cover by the way of this book it's so gorgeous I love books that have like paintings on them and then very neon letters I am so in love with it so this follows three women across three different generations from the Wayward family. Kate, Violet and Altha. Kate lives in 2019, Violet in 1942 and Altha in 1619. And Altha is on trial for witchcraft 
and we follow Violet as she she is living in this giant house or this mansion um, and she just wants wants to be in nature and she's very fond of insects she really likes insects and that's the part I really liked and she goes out in nature and she collects these insects in little box and she feeds them and she climbs in trees but her father wants her to be a proper young lady so he tells her not to and he, at one point he even locks her up in her chamber I believe or does she do? I don't know and um, then at one point I think a cousin comes to her house and things change and not for the good and that's all I can say without spoiling because it happens like well shit happens let's just say that and then we follow Kate in like 2019 as I said who just ran away from an abusive relationship and now hides in a wayward cottage inherited by her great aunt Violet which I really liked and the wayward cottage is just so cozy but she's also like in that garden and then planting things and flowers and spring and she really describes how she likes that when she nurses the earth the earth gives her the flowers and the berries in return you expect it to be more on the autumn witchy side but it's really also very spring themed because it has so much magic and flowers and insects it's really like very light green or something if I would associate it with the color it's like light green or the most light green is like the violet perspective I don't know it's so hard to explain but violet's perspective is like really spring themed she's really just darting past creeks and collecting flowers and it's so it's so uplifting but also there are so much dark things happening to this woman it's such a good book it has beautiful prose i believe i just really like this book highly recommend then we have an historical fiction that is here for the exact same reason that uh, a song of silver for flame like night is here and that is because it has japanese culture in it and I it has spring vibes to me and that is Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. This is the Dutch edition but this is about uh, Sayuri, a Geisha in Japan and we basically follow her story of how she came to be Geisha and the struggle but also her success. I really like a story about a woman just going through struggles but then also having so much success. I just love that. It just is pure do dopamine for me with like a story about someone being successful. I don't know. It just always warms my heart, especially someone who you just want to be successful and who you just so deeply root for. And I really deeply rooted for our main character. It has a lot of like vibes of um, geishas who have like flowers in their hair and who are drinking like this sake i believe it's called it's just like this alcohol drink which the guys has drink and tea and which i really like there's this girl um i don't know if she's called pumpkin or if her nickname's pumpkin but i just really liked that and i just wanted to tell you that it's one of the friends i believe of the main character it was just beautiful Oh, I totally forgot about this book. This is another magical realism, which is was supposed to come after Wayward, but since when are we organized on this channel? This is The Last Bookshop by Evie Woods, and it's about three uh, strangers who get connected through this last bookshop, which like appears only when it wants to appear. And one of these perspectives is back in time, I believe in 19... 21 we follow Opeline who created the bookshop and then we follow Martha and Henry in the present time and Henry is searching for the bookshop and Martha well, she lives in the house of a wealthy woman as a maiden for her to, to clean, clean up and shit and that's how Henry believes where the last bookshop is but it only appears at certain moments 
so they kind of have a love story going on, but it didn't annoy me because most of the time I'm I'm annoyed by love stories. But it really felt like just it was very easy and heartwarming. I still wasn't too obsessed with romance, but that's because I'm never obsessed with romance. But I did really, at some points, just like how comfortable they were around each other. I think I really liked that part. It's really, it's a, it's a good romance, I think, if you're really into that. Because even I, who wasn't much into romance, could appreciate this. But yeah, it has the magical realism going on with the bookshop. There's also like a lot of just book love, but also um, Opaline is spending her time in um, France and Paris. And we have libraries and just Martha really tries to have a new beginning with her life. And I feel like spring is also a new beginning theme. Can't explain it further. It's just a vibe. This book is like so spring themed. Even though there isn't much like actual spring in there. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's very good. It's really a heartwarming story, but still tackles like some dark issues. Especially it has the um, historical trope of crazy woman gets locked up because she's not actually crazy, but she's just strong feminist who speaks up for herself. That trope, and I really like that trope because it's just like, ooh, feminism, even though it's repeated and cliche. Wayward also has this trope, I believe. I think it has. I just really like books with that trope. It can't go wrong for me. Also, I totally forgot to show you guys my new, my new, my new inhabitant of my room. It is a cat and it holds a pancake plant. I don't know if you call those the same in English, but in Dutch you call them pancake plants. Look at how adorable this is. I'm so in love with it. And it's just great that it stands in my, on my bookshelves. Then another histor, no, it's not historical fiction. It's a thriller, and this is The Butterfly House by Marcia Preston. And it follows Bobby Lee, who we basically follow her in the present time as an adult who is kind of nervous, kind of not really dealing with life very well. And then we follow her in her past as a child where she had an alcoholic mother and was just struggling at home and she kind of found escapism in the house of her best friend, Cincy. And especially her mother, she could really bond with the mother of Cincy. And this house was the butterfly house where they lived in because the mother of Cincy was this um, biologist, I believe. She like researched butterflies. So this house is just filled with like green vines climbing up climbing up wooden poles and butterflies just flying all around but it just follows the relationships between like Cincy's mother and Cincy and Bobby Lee and it's so interesting I didn't really like the present time point of view of Bobby Lee I just thought it was quite boring and it shouldn't have to be here but the butterfly house made up for it. It was so beautiful and like the vibes of being in that house. I could imagine it so perfectly. But it's of course also still a literary thriller. So shit goes wrong between um, Cincy and Bobby Lee and the mother. And it's very interesting. The relationships are like really interesting to pick apart. This pile is very unstable. Then we have the last book, which is a non-fiction and quite quite a big boy, but it's totally worth it. This is the uh, Dutch edition, but in English it would be called uh, Braiding Sweet Grass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. If I say that in English, I will stumble upon the R's, so I just say it in the Dutch, the Dutch R's. This is about... 
how do I ex even explain what it is about? Because it tackles so many shit. It's about nature. It's non-fiction, which mainly just is about nature. But it tackles it from so many different perspectives. Because um, the writer, Robin Wall Kimmerer, is a descendant of the Pot Potawatomi, which is like this indigenous tribe, I believe. Yes. And they had such interesting rituals with nature and they had such respect for nature. And she really talks about that from the perspective of a descendant of the Potawatomi. Potawatomi. But also she has gone to a science school where she has learned other perspectives on nature, where she has learned to view it um, based on how wondrous it is from like the cells and things and how wondrous that is. And the Potawatomi size is more like just honoring the land and what it gives. And it's all so beautiful because she has like such multiple perspectives. She also really interweaves her personal stories into this. She would start a chapter like once when I went to pluck uh, strawberries and that's how it continues. And she tackles climate change, but also how we should really respect the earth and nature. And it just has so many cool facts. I tapped the hell out of it. It's even at one point, this is just an example. Um, that the strawberry in Potawatomi is called the heartberry because it grew in the heart from like this goddess of them who died. And then when she fell to the earth, uh, from her heart grew a heartberry. And that's the strawberry. In Dutch, you know what uh, strawberry is called in Dutch? It would literally translate to earth berry. Just also giving you some Dutch lore in here. Isn't that just so cool? Like this book and the nature, but also like the indigenous look on it. It's so beautiful. And I read this during spring and summer, just sitting in the garden with this book on my lap. And it was so beautiful. I highly recommend this to everyone. Maybe if you're a plant lover, you've already read it, but... If you haven't, you absolutely should if you love plants because it talks with such a fondness of nature that it really gets to you. It's just beautiful. Oh, I have two books I forgot to talk about. Um, those are actually fantasy. This video is already missed. Let's just get on with this. This is a duology, the Three Dark Crowns duology by Kendra Blake. This is about three sisters who are, I believe you call that triplings, I don't know, um, who live in this on this magical island, I believe. Yes, the island of Fenburn, where they both, they all three of them have like a piece of the country, but the tradition in this country, because every generation is of queens is one of triplings and they all have to fight each other and then one queen will rise and that queen will birth another tripling again and so it goes forth and we just follow the these three queens battle basically and how hard it is for them to kill their sisters but also how they really want to make everybody around them proud the struggle we, we really follow that um, and the sisters also have different abilities because we follow Catherine, who has, uh, she can do poison. I don't know how it's called in English, but she can resist poison and she can create very good poison. Then we follow Arsino, who she can talk to animals and make flowers um, grow, which is like the power I would have loved to have as a kid. And then we have Mirabella, who has elemental magic and she can do thunderstorms and water. And all of these perspectives are very nature-based, but all on a different level. Arsino is very wild and she lives in this fisher's town. And she is just having fun with animals and plants. And she's very wild and I really like that wild fisher's town kind of vibe. But she's also very loving to the people around her. Then we have Mirabella who is kind of locked away in this temple more. She's a very strong gift, but she's like... 
also there are like cliffs near where she lives and um, there's like grass fields and then we have Catherine who lives in this dark castle but there are like some potion making which I really like it has a lot of spring vibes it has beautiful interior design and this map is so stunning. It's beautiful. I love like the little doodles on the map. Also just this tree with the ravens. Or the crows. I don't know what it is. I really this was one of my favorite books. And this is the um this is the sequel to it. Um I don't know how that's called in English. One Dark Throne. These books are so good, you have to read them. And they have immaculate spring vibes. Um, with those young queens who just living their best lives, but really don't want to kill each other, but are kind of forced by this society that is really not very nice society. <laughs> I, I love this book, that's all I can say. I think now I've talked about all the books. I hope I haven't forgotten one. These were all the recommendations I had for spring books. I really enjoyed talking about spring books because I am so excited for spring. And here in the Netherlands, we have warmer weather, but like not much yet. There isn't much sunshine and I really want the sunshine to come in. So this just gave the spring vibes a little. Um, that was it for today. I'll see you in another video. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye bye butterflies!